We're at the Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry Armory on Burgess Street in downtown Fayetteville. The Fayetteville Light Infantry is the oldest military organization in the South and dates from George Washington's time. Today, it is North Carolina's official historic military command. We're gonna go inside the museum and take a look at some of the artifacts. We're in the front room of the Armory of the Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry. There are exhibits that reflect several different periods of our very interesting history. Home Guard units like this cropped up all over North Carolina and the United States as a means of protecting individual hometowns as well as being able to provide a defense mechanism for the state and the nation in time of war. This unit came into existence in 1793 when it appeared that war was imminent with European powers, but did not actually go to any conflict until the War of 1812 when this unit was called upon to defend the principal port city of Wilmington. Uh, the Independent Light Infantry uh, provided a lot of hometown uh, law enforcement activity before the time of a large law enforcement uh, agency like the police department or the sheriff's department. Uh, it protected uh, the jail, it uh, guarded the antebellum uh, arsenal site, uh, it provided a number of law enforcement functions throughout the years, and by the 1950s was organized into the Fayetteville Police Department uh, auxiliary unit. So we have a long standing tie with law enforcement, and that's why you'll see older law enforcement uniforms dispersed throughout the armory. As North Carolina's sole historic military command under North Carolina General Statute, we are an asset of the State Adjutant General. And in 1994, we were the recipients of the Outstanding Unit Award uh, issued by General Rudisill. This room in the museum reflects our history from George Washington's time through the Spanish-American War of 1898. Several interesting segments of our history include Isaac Hammond, a free black man who served in the 10th North Carolina Regiment during the American Revolution and was a member of the Fayetteville Light Infantry after the Revolution. On his deathbed in the 1820s, he requested to be buried on our parade ground with his fife in hand that he might remain with the unit in spirit through eternity. And he, pursuant to his request, is today buried on our early parade ground. This unit had the distinction of fighting in the first land engagement of the war between the states at Big Bethel, Virginia on 10 June 1861, a Confederate victory. And seven of our members that were present during that first battle were present with General Robert E. Lee when he surrendered in April of 1865. This room in the museum is dedicated to the border dispute of 1916 and the First World War. The Fayetteville Light Infantry was mobilized in 1916 when Pancho Villa crossed onto American soil and raided an American town. They remained in active federal service until deployed in the First World War as Company F, 119th Infantry of the 30th Division under the command of Robert Lamb. Six of the members of the FILI were winners and recipients of the Distinguished Service Cross, uh, next only to the Medal of Honor for Heroism in Action. The second floor of the FILI Museum is dedicated to our veterans from World War II to present day. The Fayetteville Light Infantry was no longer a deployable unit by the Second World War, but our members fought in all of the wars from World War II to present day, and we honor them up here. The uniform that I'm wearing now is the ceremonial uniform worn by the FILI and is the type of uniform that was worn when General Lafayette came to Fayetteville. Fayetteville's the first city in the United States named for Lafayette and the only city named for him that he actually visited during his lifetime. The Fayetteville Light Infantry provided his bodyguard service during his brief two-day stay in Fayetteville from the 4th to the 5th of March of 1825. The Fayetteville Light Infantry is one of just a handful of units in the United States authorized to carry President George Washington's personal standard from the American Revolution. It's a blue field with 13 white stars and was brought out of retirement for those units that serve in the Centennial Legion of Historic Military Commands, recognized historic military commands in the 13 original colonies. Very, very rarely will you see this flag. It flies today outside of George Washington's mausoleum at Mount Vernon. The Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry Armory and Museum is open by appointment only. However, several times during the course of the year, we are open to the public and we would encourage everyone to come down and visit this fine facility.